This video is brought to you by Magellan TV. Stick around later for my personal documentary recommendation. Morning light reaches the mission, and shouting comes from beyond the palisade. The missionaries stagger from their quarters. All 62 of their horses have been stolen. A few miles upstream stands a Spanish stronghold, commanded by Diego Ortiz Parilla. Ortiz dispatches 15 soldiers to hunt whichever Native American band perpetrated this, and they ride out into the searing northern stretches of a world claimed by the Spanish crown. Over two centuries ago, conquistadors traversed jungle and mountain in brilliant armor, staked an old world flag into the American continents. The inhabitants of serpentine monuments and scattered villages were massacred by the Spanish, and millions more lost to plague as the conquerors mined cavernous earth for gold and silver. But the Spanish push north has stagnated, fractured into remote and arid settlements and forts and missions on land inhabited by powerful indigenous nations, who every day grow wealthier in Spanish horses and European weapons. The 15 soldiers scanning for the tracks of horse thieves now see hundreds of indigenous warriors, the lords of the southern plains, Comanche. The Fifteen ride back to the fort in haste. The mission in the fort had been constructed at the request of the Lapan Apache, who expressed a desire to become Christian. Yet few of their people have ever visited the mission, and their diplomacy with the Spanish appears now to have been merely a bulwark against their relentless enemies, the Comanche. The friars of the mission nevertheless refuse to abandon their holy house, trusting no harm shall come to them. Two weeks later, mass is interrupted by shrieking war cries. 2,000 Comanche and their allies overtake the plains. Enraged faces painted black and red, arms raised high with muskets and bows and lances. They breach the palisade. Spanish reinforcements arrive from the stronghold and they're decimated. With only a few dozen soldiers left, Ortiz cloisters within the walls of the fort for days until smoke fades from the skyline, and then he rides to the ruins. The altar is draped with the headless corpse of a clergyman, dripping onto shattered statues all around, and scalpless and naked friars are strewn amongst the embers, staring out from eye sockets gouged clean. These are hard lands, rattlesnake brush scattered over red plateaus and scorched plains. The Comanche came from the north decades ago. Following dense bison herds, they established strong ties with French traders for guns, and they honor an alliance with the local Tonkawas and other peoples against the Lapan Apaches. The Comanche are semi-nomadic bison hunters and warriors whose domain consists of autonomous bands in which individuals display status by gifting wealth and providing for other members. They number over 15,000 and worship the supreme sun god and mother earth. Warfare, torture, and fear are their chosen tools for survival. The Comanche attack on the mission has indeed rattled the outposts of New Spain, as do their subsequent killings of Apache near the fort. Bodies are found in bleeding, disfigured arrangement. Ortiz petitions surrounding settlements to send reinforcements for a counterattack, but none dares to offer up its own garrison. The Comanche gallop across the plains like specters of the steppe nomads who once ruled the old world, mounted warriors of unparalleled precision and acrobatic mastery. But over a year removed from the attack on the mission, officials in Mexico City raise a costly army of 600 men. Spanish regulars, militiamen, Apache, and indigenous Mexicans gather at the ruins of the old mission and march behind Ortiz to punish the Comanche and their allies. The convoy treks north, and arriving in wooded country, they discover a remote village of Tonkawas, 
No Comanche in sight, or tease orders in ambush anyway. They kill over 50 villagers and capture 150 men, women, and children to be transported back to San Antonio, many to suffer forced conversion and servitude. The victorious forces continue north until 70 indigenous warriors ambush them from the woods. The Spanish counterattack chase them into the woods and find themselves on a sinking sandbank before a massive village. An alliance of Wichita, Comanche, and other nations. Hive-like huts and pointed teepees flanked by a river and a stockade behind a moat. Civilians take refuge in the center. Hundreds of warriors clamber to the breastworks with muskets and bows. Ortiz orders an assault, but his forces are repulsed. Their cannon fire elicits mocking laughter from the indigenous camp. Then, Comanche riders take the field at full gallop. Warriors contort and incredibly hang to one side of their horses to avoid Spanish fire, all while launching bullets and arrows into Spanish ranks. Ortiz is struck in the arm as his enemies surround him. Combat lasts for hours and sees 20 of Ortiz's men desert while nearly 40 are killed or wounded. Ortiz leaves the wagons and cannons and leads his men in a nighttime escape. Comanche reprisals will come. On the fringes of Spanish New Mexico and Texas are dusty towns and distant ranches. And whenever the moon looms large, the Comanche strike. Raids are systematic, horses are stolen, homes burned, men are killed along with children and babies, and women are violated, then killed or taken captive. In this manner, the Comanche will drive enemies and old indigenous allies from their swelling range in the coming years incessantly raiding their stables so as to leave the smallpox-stricken natives and even Spanish settlers impoverished, and therefore reliant on trade with the Comanche to obtain horses and guns. One Wichita chief writes, The Comanche happen to be our neighbors, but shed our blood and steal our horses daily. We are deprived of everything and have neither hatchets, nor picks, nor powder, nor bullets to defend from our enemies. Although the days of Spanish missions and forts on Comanche land are over, the war is not. In the final decades of the 18th century, Juan Batista de Anza leads Spanish missions against the Comanche, ambushes raiding parties and kills a powerful chief, and then years of reciprocal bloodshed end with long-standing peace treaties between the two powers, treaties the Spanish dare not violate. The ascendant and fierce Comanche have exiled their enemies, and now prosper upon the southern plains, tracking buffalo from their teepee villages. The Spanish Empire has come to recognize the power of a Comanche nation, whose deft diplomacy, mercantile network, and mastery of the horse has trampled the old conquistador spirit. Spain's imperial claim to the Americas has meanwhile tattered and frayed. For a revolutionary storm is rising against the thrones of the West, and it has also kindled the steady westward ambitions of settlers, called Americans. Incredible warrior societies have existed in every corner of the world. In the documentary Maasai, The Last Dance of the Warriors from Magellan TV takes you to Tanzania for a glimpse at the still numerous Maasai people and their ancient warrior traditions. It's part of Magellan's Tribal Odyssey series and does a wonderful job showcasing the storied Maasai rituals and beliefs as we follow a band of young warriors on their journey to become elders. To go watch the documentary for free, just click the link in the description and you'll actually get an exclusive free month of membership for Magellan TV with access to Magellan's catalog of 3,000 history documentaries. And they're adding new documentaries in history, crime, and science every week. So click that link and you can start streaming these through your TV, mobile device, laptop, or other streaming device right away.